All right, so in this video or in this lecture of Salesforce Bytes, we talk about how can you enable the debug logs for any user. Now debug logs are used when you are trying to debug an issue, you are trying to understand what's happening in the system, how the execution is working, um, how things are working and you want to check a specific value of a component, a metadata, a validation rule, a workflow rule execution, a flow builder execution, all of that can be found in the debug log. Right? And to be able to enable that for a specific user, you simply need to go to debug logs. Right? So I'm logged in as a system administrator here. Let's go to debug logs. So you'll have to type debug log on the quick find box and you can open debug logs. And here you can create a new debug log for a specific user. Right now, I have a debug log created for the SF trainer, which is this user right here. But let's say I want to create it for another user. Who should that user be? Let's say our user should be the standard platform guy. Right? So trainer this this user right here so i'm logged in here as the trainer right and now let's go back to our system admin and now let's click on the new button and create a debug log so I, so here you can set a traced entity as a particular class as an automated process like process builder or flow builder and then you can also schedule it for platform integration or apex trigger so based on the option entity that you choose the tracing begins right we want to trace or we want to track or we want to log our the actions taken by the standard platform user guy that's the trainer user right so we'll choose the user option and we'll select the trainer user from this list so this should be the entity that we are tracking now here you get to choose a start and an end date so the start date corresponds automatically to the current date and time and this expiration date is by default 30 minutes so i'll reduce this to something less than 30 because this is just for demo purposes and I don't want to be you know taking up all Salesforce's resources I'll just set it for something like nine minutes and I'll set the debug level so what is the debug level there are different debug levels available the by default and the simplest one that most developers use is the SFDC dev console wherein you can track all these metadata now if you want to track apex code to be as the finest which means most granular debug debugging that you need is on the apex code you can set it as finest so there are different values to be able to check that let's click on the new button and let's try to create our own debug log so we'll call it trainer debug log or let's call it trainer log right and if you notice all this metadata any kind of database operations will be tracked workflow operations will be tracked validation call out apex code and so on and so forth right let's say i just want to track the database operations the workflow operations and the apex code right i want this to be finest and if you notice these are all the options available right for validation you can either have none or you can have the information right for apex code you might have none you could just see the errors the warnings information debug and these options so it gets more granular as you go down the list all right i'll just say final and i'll say none for everything else all right i don't want this information so i'll just close it so it is none for everything else i'll just say call out is also as none workflow as none i'll just keep database and apex code as the fine fine information let's click on save so now that my log has been created okay this says an error that there should be should not be any spaces so i'll just say underscore and click on save so my log is created and it is default populated here for trainer user let's click on save now once we do that if you notice the trainer log is the trace flag is enabled and it is a user debug log the name of the log is log, trainer log that we created and it, it has started on 12.6 and uh, it will expire on 12.15 right this is based on the another time zone based on the locale and time zone that the org is in so it's set in that way now this debug log section is empty let's also go open the developer console right let's go ahead and open the developer console where we can view our debug logs so let's open the developer console here so that we can view the debug logs on the developer console so you can either watch them here right here or you can open the developer console and take a look at them in this section right here that will just open up so to be able to see the debug logs you can simply go down here and you can open the log section and to be able to see other people's logs you have to click on this option that says you have to uncheck this that says show my current logs only this will only show you something that is for you or basically the logged in user so we want to choose we want to see the logs for another user that's the standard platform user right so let's go ahead and log in as the standard platform user which we are here right now as the trainer and let's go ahead and try to create a new record so we are trying to create a new account record i'll just call it test acc activist yes type prospect and let's save it okay we need an sla information i'll just put this information 
and click on save now as soon as we do a database operation let's go back to our system admin and just refresh the screen and you see what we notice is there are some logs that are coming up right the same thing would happen on the developer console if i open the log section i see three logs and if i were to open a specific log let's say i open this second log right here which is of 2.04 kb i'll see this information right so if you notice i have information about the heap allocation i have information about some statement executed and then some trigger has also fired and there was an external workflow that ran so all of this information can be tracked here and if you have to debug things you can debug it here so if you notice code unit started so a before insert trigger started here and the code unit finished here which means this was the entire trigger code after that there was a duplicate detection that started and finished and then you had workflows and duplicate detectors right this is how you can check logs and this is how you can enable logs for a different user or a user of your own all right thank you